Hello everyone, uh, Mrs Hayes here and Douglas the dog. You can see he's not very keen on doing reading today, but we are going to read you the first chapter of part two of The Boy Who Bite the World. And it is called Banana Crisis on the High Seas. So we hope you enjoy. Tom was sweating. He was nervous, really nervous. He jiggled up and down fidgeting from one foot to the other. If you were looking at Tom, you might have thought that he was desperate for the toilet. But this was even more serious than that. Tom was in a hurry, perhaps the biggest hurry he had ever been in, and nobody seemed to care. It appeared, as he bobbed up and down, looking at his watch every single second, that everybody was moving in slow motion. Am I boring you? Hope you're enjoying it more than Douglas's. A man strolled about, looking as though he had not a care in the world. A lady was standing still and shaking her shoulders to the beat of the music in her headphones. Standing still? How could anyone have the time to just stand and stare in one place? Oh dear, oh dear, thought poor Tom. I really am in trouble now. I really am late. In front of him was the cause of Tom's problems, a little old lady. To anyone else, she appeared to be a nice, kind, slightly slow old lady. A little bit like your own grandma, perhaps. Tom was behind her in the queue and she was taking an age to pay for her shopping. Come on, screamed Tom inside his head. Hurry up, please. He was too polite to actually shout this out loud though he very much wanted to. He was trying everything he could think of, all his superhero powers. <laughs> Sorry guys, I've lost my place. All his superhero powers of firing laser beams from his eyes or shrinking her to the size of an ant or making her explode, but nothing he did seemed to work because Tom did not have any superpowers. He was just a normal boy. The little old lady was, was in absolutely no hurry. Tom's journey round the world was about to come crashing to a halt. He couldn't decide whether to scream or to cry. So instead he just jiggled a bit more, sweated a bit more, and looked at his watch again and again. He was going to miss the boat. Don't miss the boat, young Tom were the last words Captain Horrocks had said. We can't wait, we leave at high tide. Captain Horrocks was about to sail across the Atlantic Ocean on his small yacht, Damsel. He had kindly invited Tom to join his crew on the adventurous crossing from Africa to South America. Tom had set off from his home to try to ride his bike all the way round the world. He had already pedaled from England to South Africa. Now he needed to get across the ocean so that he could cycle up the Americas. Tom didn't want to travel by aeroplane. There is no adventure on an aeroplane, only soggy food and annoyingly small TV screens. So Captain Horrocks' invitation to sail to South America was an exciting opportunity. The chance might not come again. Captain Horrocks and his crew had been hard at work to get the boat ready. Everything needs to be in good condition before you set out to cross an ocean. They repaired everything that was broken, checked the sails, checked them a second time, tested the water maker that turned seawater into drinking water and stocked the boat with piles of food. Everything was ready. Everything that is, until Captain Horrocks remembered they had forgotten to buy bananas. Batter my barnacles, shouted the captain, who enjoyed a colorful selection of seaworthy swear words. We can't head out to sea without bananas. Grease my jellyfish, he continued. His face was red with anger behind his bushy white beard. Which fool was in charge of shopping? Uh, you were in charge of shopping, replied Sailor Sam, but quietly, for he was scared of the captain's anger. This took Captain Horrocks by surprise. It was his fault that there were no bananas on board. Suddenly he looked embarrassed rather than cross. 
the captain waved his arms around a bit more and looked at his crew, hoping to catch someone's eye and think of a reason to shout at them. But all the sailors were looking at the floor or looking at their fingernails, as though fingernails were suddenly very interesting indeed. They knew through years of sailing the high seas with Captain Horrocks that they should never catch his eye when he was cross. As Captain Horrocks couldn't find anybody to shout at, shout at instead, he said quietly and politely, Young Tom, would you be so kind as to run along and buy bananas, please? We need a lot. Tom was delighted. He'd been worried about the lack of bananas. They were his favourite adventure food. Of course, I love bananas. Excellent, but make sure you're quick. We set sail in an hour. We won't be able to wait for you if you're late. And that is how Tom ended up fretting and fidgeting in the checkout queue at the supermarket. He had filled a trolley, one of those really big ones, with nothing but bananas. He piled them as high as he could. A huge, teetering, tottering pile of lovely yellow fruit. Tom was standing in the queue waiting to pay, whilst the little granny rummaged ever so slowly through her purse, looking for her money. At long, long last, the invisible daggers and laser beams that Tom had been firing from his eyes seemed to do the trick. The old lady found the coin she had been searching for, paid for her little basket of shopping and left. Tom emptied his pockets of all the South African money he had paid in seconds and sprinted back to the boat. It's hard to sprint when you're carrying hundreds of bananas, but that day Tom managed it. He arrived just as Sailor Sam was loosening the ropes that tied the boat to shore. I didn't think you were going to make it, Sam said. Tom was too out of breath to speak. <gasps> His chest heaved and he was panting like a dog. Passing the bananas onto the boat, he jumped aboard. The boat edged away from the harbour wall and Tom smiled. They were off. He had made it in the nick of time and they were on their way. The adventure had begun. Tom had never sailed across an ocean before, so he had a lot to learn. But there was plenty of time. About 4,000 miles of sea lay ahead of them. So on this first day, he got busy with one of the most helpful things you can do on a busy sailing boat, not getting in anybody's way. People were hauling ropes, heaving armfuls of heavy flapping sails into position and shouting a lot. The bananas were tied in big bunches out of the way at the back of the boat. They were next to Tom's trusty bike and gear. Tom's panniers, the bags that attached to his bicycle, held everything that he would need for his trip around the world. Battered and dusty, they had come a long way since he left England. Tom sat on the edge of the boat, known as the gunwale. Rhymes with tunnel. Gunwale? I might have pronounced that wrong, sorry everyone and has nothing to do with either guns or whales, dangling his legs over the whooshing blue waves. Tom looked back at the city they were leaving behind. He could see cars driving along the roads and people sitting in the cafes that lined the seashore. Cape Town was the most beautiful city he had seen so far on his journey around the world. He saw a girl eating an ice cream and waving at the boats. Tom waved back at her. I wish I had an ice cream, he thought. It was hot under the big African sun. I really, really wish I had an ice cream. What Tom did not know was that the girl was thinking to herself at the very same moment. I really, really wish I was out there on the sailing boat. Above the cafes on the shore was a cluster of tall skyscrapers, their windows glinting in the sunshine. And behind the side the skyscrapers saw the impressive sight of Table Mountain. If you see a picture of Table Mountain, you can easily recognise it, as it has a flat top like a table. 
Sailors can see Table Mountain almost 100 miles out at sea. It is one of the oldest mountains in the world, more than 600 million years old. There is an animal that is very common on the mountain called a dassie. It looks a bit like a guinea pig, but its closest relative is actually an elephant. The wave spray soaked Tom and he licked the salty taste of the sea from his lips. The yacht was leaning over on its side now, healing as the wind pushed against the sails. But what was this? He became aware of a strange feeling in the pit of his stomach a sort of squelchy, gurgling type feeling. Uh oh, it doesn't sound good, does it? Yes, something very odd was happening down there in his tummy. Something not very nice at all. I think, Tom asked to himself, I think, I think I'm going to be... <coughs> Without any warning, Tom was sick. He leaned forward and heaved as his lunch, chewed up and disgusting looking, came spewing out of his mouth and into the sea. Seasickness is caused by the movement of a boat rocking up and down. Some people get the same sick feeling in cars. Poor Tom felt horrible. Captain Horrocks was steering the boat, heaving the massive steering wheel from side to side to keep the boat straight amongst the bouncing waves. Are you okay, young Tom? He shouted into the wind. Uh, was all the boy could reply. Well, flip my flying fish. You're seasick, aren't you? Uh, your face is as green as a Brussels sprout. Uh, Tom could not be certain, but he thought that Captain Horrocks... Sorry, everyone. Tom could not be certain, but he thought that Captain Horrocks might be trying to hide a smile. And at that very moment, <coughs> Tom was sick again. He couldn't believe how much disgusting stuff was coming out of his stomach. And there was no hiding it now. The skipper was laughing very loudly indeed. Ho, 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 laughed Captain Horrocks, who with his big tummy and bushy white beard, did look a bit like an ocean-going Father Christmas. It's very mean of me to laugh at you when you're being sick. Young Tom, I'm sorry. Boil my bosun. I know how horrible it can feel. Uh, I'm only laughing because I remember the first time I set out to sea. I was sick as a dog and green as a cabbage. But by the morning you'll be fit as a kipper. I promise you. Oh, replied Tom and he crawled down below deck to his bunk bed. But it was true. As the sun rose the next morning, Tom was relieved to notice that his stomach, like the ocean, was calmer. Fry my flippers, shouted Captain Horrocks with a twinkle in his eye. You be looking much happier today. Their boat was out of, out of sight of land now. All around was nothing but enormous empty ocean. I feel much better, thank you, answered Tom. Being seasick is terrible, but now I am very, very hungry. Captain Horrocks laughed. Ho, ho, ho. We'll have ourselves a feast of a breakfast, my boy, he said, and then we'll set about turning you into a proper sailor. How does that sound? Fantastic, cried Tom with a big smile. And then in Tom's journal, he's written a kit list. So it's a list of all the stuff that he had with him on his adventure through the Americas. So, bike, toolkit, puncture kit and pump, helmet, tent, sleeping bag and mat, camping stove, pan and spoon, food and water, one, pa one pair of spare pants, socks and shirt, waterproof coat, woolly hat and gloves, sun hat, torch, toothbrush, first aid kit, Diary and pen, map and compass, camera, passport, and most importantly, Teddy. I wonder whether you could write a list of all the things you would take with you on your journey. Now I'm just gonna wake Douglas up because this little one, oh, 
he has been sleeping through that whole story. So I hopefully you've been paying a bit more attention. Say bye. See you later, everyone. Hope you enjoyed.